Welcome to this session, what it's really like to consult with attorneys. I'd like to introduce you to four certified legal nurse consultants, Susanna Raj, Dale Barnes, Doreen Goldstein, and Michelle Neal. And I wanna just get straight, straight on with this topic of this session. What is it really like to consult with attorneys? So Suzanne, I'll start with you. What is it really like? It's really fun. I, I really enjoy it. It's just like talking uh, in, at an intelligent conversation when you're speaking with an educator uh, or you're speaking with a physician who can just as easily educate you. Um, I find it to be very interesting. I find that you really have to be focused and on your toes, but that's not necessarily new to us nurses. It's just the venue is new. And the venue is whether on the phone or in an office uh, versus at a patient's bedside, uh, you still, it's very engaging and, and very exciting. I learn something new every single day. So one of the things you're suggesting that I'm hearing is that it's a real collaborative process. Absolutely. And it's definitely one of the things I love about attorneys. You know, it's always interesting to me because they really do listen to what you as the consultant have to say. They're attentive. They don't just listen. They actually do something with your opinion, which I know a lot of nurses, it's one of their biggest frustration in nursing. People gratuitously ask your opinion, but they do nothing with it, right? Right. How about you, Doreen? Yeah, I mean, to mimic Suzanne, it is like new every day. You know, each attorney, what I like is like most people, everyone's so different. They all have their own needs and desires and what works for them. And, you know, they understand that as nurses, we don't know everything too. So it's a collaboration and uh, they like to hear our experiences. Dale, what's it like for you? I also think that it's a lot of fun. And what I find is attorneys are very different than doctors because attorneys will say to you, thank you so much. I could not have done this case without you. And I will use your help again. I'm going to refer you to my colleagues. And when on earth does a doctor ever say that to you? It doesn't happen. So it really is ego boosting in a lot of ways. And, you know, I always let the attorneys know that as much as I can help them, I don't know the legal aspects. I'm not an attorney. On the same note, though, they don't know the medical and nursing issues that I might be able to find for them. Michelle, what's it like for you? I agree with everyone. I mean, I personally love it. I think they're fun to work with most of the time. Um, like Doreen said, they're all different. So you get to, used to different people's personalities and you kind of learn to adjust based on each different attorney. Um, and you, like, like Dale said, you get great feedback. Otherwise, you're not going to have a relationship with an attorney. So if, you know, they want your knowledge and expertise, more so than working with doctors. However, I will say when you begin, I do compare it similar to the way that when you start your first time in the hospital and you're working with an, a doctor that might be intimidating at first, you may feel that when you start as a consultant, but then it, it changes really quickly once a relationship of trust is built. Attorneys come in all shapes and sizes, similar to MDs. And you kind of uh, talked about MDs briefly, Dale. And in general, how would you say consulting with attorneys is different than working with MDs? Well, it depends on the MD, just like it depends on the attorney because everyone does have their own personality. But as far as the doctors go, I mean, I remember the days when you'd see a doctor coming and you'd stand up from the nurse's station, give them your seat and go get the chart for them. Well, we don't do that so much anymore, but I think we don't get as frequent or often good information and feedback from the physicians, but we do from the attorneys, and I think that the attorneys look at us 
as knowing something that they don't. The doctors don't look at us that way. They usually think they know more. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting that you mentioned that because just by virtue of how the relationship is formed probably influences that. When attorneys hire you, they're actually hiring you as a consultant. They're hiring you for your experience, for your knowledge. The MDs, you're just there, so to speak, for them. And they certainly can use you to the capacity that you know, you're capable of being involved, but I think you're just kind of part of the scene in healthcare, whereas attorneys are actually reaching out to you and seeking you out. How about you, Suzanne? What's what's different for you? I think you've addressed it. I I it it's that they want they they are thirsty for your information. They do not know what it's like to work in the inner workings of the healthcare system. They only know from the attorneys from the litigation side what their perceptions are, what they what they've sued people for, what they've defended, you know, providers for. Uh, so I think they're very interested in what we have to 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 say, uh, what our insight is, and the foundation for that insight. Uh, whereas physicians think, for the most part, that they are the master of their craft and they don't need the insight from the nurse. Um, I, I don't. I want to be careful about saying that because obviously it de depending upon the work setting between the, the and the relationship between the nurse and the physician it's going to vary or a first assistant and a surgeon obviously with all due respect but i think that attorneys are thirsty for that information they have no idea what really the depth of our training and our experience um and what we have encountered on our on our day-to-day -day, uh, clinical experience Thank you. Doreen, you want to add anything? Sure, yes, always. Uh, you know, to quote one of the attorneys that I work with very closely, uh, not too long after working with him, he said, I need you for your brains. You know, they need information from us that's not in that textbook. What really happens during the code? What really happens in precipitous deliveries? You know, all that information that we have all lived and become secondhand to us. They just, they don't understand that. So yes, it's different from physicians, uh, unless they're, you know, eager medical students who will listen to you. And, you know, like Suzanne says, there are some that certainly will listen to the nurses, but for the most part, the attorneys are really looking for what happened. You know, tell me what really happens in the hospitals. Michelle? Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything everybody said. I think the the other point that I'd like to bring up is especially working kind of behind the scenes consulting, you have a lot more autonomy. You're not following direct orders from somebody necessarily. You can take a little bit of your creativity and how you're researching and doing your um, work product and deliver that to attorneys versus this formula set out that is necessary when you're working with a doctor in the hospital or a clinic or wherever it is. So I think the autonomy for me is one of the biggest differences between the two. Another difference I've noticed is just by training, RNs are basically taught to take orders from MDs. Certainly RNs will challenge an MD's order, but when that happens, that nurse is stepping out and really going out on a limb there potentially. And we've all seen some nurses who get rewarded for that on behalf of their patient and some nurses who get their hands slapped or actually punished pr pretty severely. Attorneys, on the other hand, they're very used to having a lot of input of different opinions because they have to basically litigate against an opposing side. So they wanna know the good, the bad, and the ugly. So when you're conferring with an attorney, that attorney is actually expecting you to not only give them the good news, but also the bad news to potentially disagree with them. And they're very comfortable with that because that whole process is what we call uh, the adversarial process that they're very used to. So I think that's another thing that's quite different. Michelle, what do you find most challenging about consulting with attorneys? 
I think probably the biggest thing is every attorney you work with is going to be different. Just like we've mentioned before, different personalities, they may have different requests. They may have different formats they want you to use for report writing, different styles. Um, you know, I work with some attorneys where I know how to work up a case based on what that attorney will or will not want, want versus another attorney maybe doesn't want me to work up a case to a level if, if it's minimal damages. So I think it's more of a getting to understand what each of your attorneys is like, communicating with them to know that you're giving them the work product that they that meets their needs. Um, so it's and it's a growing process as you begin. I mean, obviously you're not going to know exactly what they want. So that's where communication comes in. Um, so it's just getting used to all the different ideas that each attorney may or may not have. What works for one might not work for another, so make no assumptions. Suzanne. I think that's absolutely correct. Um, you have to be able to shift gears uh, based upon the needs of that attorney client, what their expectations are, um, what work product do they expect um, or, or are they used to, what they prefer. Um, understanding and communicating as to what those preferences are um, is, is sometimes it takes, you know, a couple of times, you know, to really get that symbiosis going. Sometimes you're good right out the gate. It depends, up, I believe, upon how you as the CLNC consultant communicates. I find that in building the relationships with the attorney clients that I have, I have to take the initiative. I cannot sit back and just go, oh, well, I wonder, you know, how come he didn't say what he wants? No, you have to be proactive and you need to seek out that information. Um, if, if you as the CLNC consultant don't seek out that information, well, then you're behind the eight ball right out the gate. So I think as so long as um, you are always one step ahead, you know, in that communication and that building of the relationship with the attorney, you will be successful um, in achieving the work product that the attorney uh, desires and then modifying it as the years go on or, or the months or whatever the case may be. The work product that I started out with um, 22 years ago um, is different uh, than what my work product is now. Uh, and that's because litigation has changed. And I mean, it's been a long time and the type of cases and, and that's just, you have to constantly evolve in your role as a, as a CLNC consultant for sure. Um, and I think that's what keeps the challenge um, alive and exciting uh, as, you, as you move along the way, the journey. I'm glad you said that you have to often make recommendations and tell them the direction that you should be going or even guiding them in a direction because that's what a consultant does, right? A consultant advises. And in fact, that's a question that I've got uh, many times over the years from RNs interested in legal nurse consulting. And the question is, well, won't an attorney tell me what to do? No, consultants already know what they're supposed to do you're going in as an advisor and that's your job. So absolutely. And that's, that's a huge distinction, isn't it? That you take a leadership role from your perspective as a consultant. Dale, how about you? Well, I've had mentoring calls where the CLNC says to me, well, how am I gonna know what kind of report to write? Mm -hmm. And again, the same thing that Suzanne said, I tell them how important communication is. And I also think that this is a good time in addition to marketing to use your work products, you know, your sample work products, because you can say to the attorney, I can do any of these things. I can do a combination of them. Or if you have another idea for something that's worked for you, I'd like to know what that is so I can meet your needs. So I, again, communication is the most important thing with the attorney. Doreen, anything different from what we've heard that's challenging for you with attorneys? Yes, actually. Uh, the biggest thing I think is that attorney time and our time is so different. You know, I 
we were just talking about this with another mentor today, how something is a rush for an attorney, like I need this case yesterday. And then you give it to them and then you sit and you wait and you wait and you wait. And then all of a sudden it's a big rush, like, oh, I need you to do this too. So that is a big learning curve for all of us, for CLNCs, is that just because it's a rush doesn't mean that they're gonna get to it today. You know, we're used to doing something stat. It happens right away. It happens within an hour. It happens within our shift. And it's not the case with attorneys. So that's that was a huge, uh, I guess, challenge for me when I started. And it still is to this day, but I've learned to kind of live with it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of interesting, too, because that's part of the leadership that Suzanne was alluding to, because I know when I first started consulting with attorneys, over time, I educated them to get me involved in the cases from the beginning, not at the last minute, because I noticed that it's the attorneys who are going to take the deposition for the first time next week and just called you in that need everything yesterday. But if they get you involved from the beginning, you have fewer of those crises kinds of uh, deadlines. Michelle, how do you deal with an attorney who disagrees with you? Education. I think the biggest thing um, when an attorney, I've only ever had one truly come back and, and he's done it with every single case I've ever done with him. So it's just the personality difference. Um, but where I find what's missing there is the education. They, there's lack of knowledge in the area that I'm educating about. So anything related to nursing and medical um, this specific attorney doesn't do a lot of medical cases. So anytime this, I was working with a plaintiff attorney and anytime the defense would come back and argue about something, he'd run right to me and ask the question and kind of argue back and forth and try to figure it out. And I always just went back to educating them, educating them, be confident and stick with your opinion and then back your opinion with sources and provide them additional knowledge so that they're able to learn from it and grow from it. So maybe the next time they won't disagree with you as much. Um, I think it's kind of funny because this was an attorney I maybe got two years into being a consultant. And I just thought, I don't know if I can keep up with this guy. Like every single time I'm turning something in, there's an argument. I could just got to wait for it. And it always happens to be, you know, dinner time after I'm ready to sit down, stop working, eat dinner with my kids. And um, it's, it really, I mean, sometimes it took an hour phone call to just sticking with my opinion and providing the education that was necessary. Um, and, you know, I still work with them occasionally. So <laughs> it just, it just shows that a lot of times they're not arguing with you because you're wrong. They don't think you're wrong. They want to learn from it. And some attorneys may just have a different way to approach that. Yeah. Again, as you're saying, different personalities and very important that you said, you don't just try to educate them, you provide the standards, you provide the guidelines, the references. In other words, it's not just Michelle's opinion. You're providing the opinion of the profession because that's a really important distinction that a lot of RNs who have no relationship to legal nurse consulting don't really understand that we're not there to give an attorney our independent opinion. We're there as a representative of the nursing profession. And so, that's the best way, as you're saying, to kind of counteract that uh, attorney's concerns about your opinion. What do you find, Dale, most rewarding about working with attorneys? Winning a case. <laughs> um, I think that that is just the greatest feeling, when, especially when the attorney says, I couldn't have done this without you. Or part of that winning sometimes comes from finding something that the attorney never would have found. And it's something else that they can use in their argument and as some definitive um, information about something that actually happened that they would not have found on their own. So I find that challenging and rewarding. Suzanne, how about you? What do you find most rewarding? Um, I like hearing that you always make us look good. That's, that's my attorney client. You know, they, they, they tell me that. And I'm like, well, it takes a village, you know, it takes a team. It's not, I never take the credit 
you know, for all what I said or what I found, it's like, okay, we're a team and together me understanding where they want to go and what, what I can do from my perspective, whether it's nursing standards of practice or the nursing regulations that are associated um, with that provider um, that I can help that navigate that course. And to me, that's the most rewarding. Um, and it keeps me going every day because I love what I do. And just to hear it now and again, um, and to let my team know that they're doing a great job because I do have a team. It's not just me. Um, I think it's really important. And I don't think we get in our profession enough out of voice, you know, and who doesn't like that now and again? Doreen, what's most rewarding for you? Uh, what Dale and Suzanne both said, and when they refer you to a colleague, you know, getting a phone call from another attorney that says, hey, Bob Smith told me you just helped him on their case. And, you know, I really need you for another case. Mm -hmm. So that's a big, that's very rewarding is not just getting the name, actually having that attorney call you and, you know, establishing a relationship with them. And one thing I hear from so many consultants is when you actually experience the attorney doing something with your opinion and you get to witness the end result and how that made such a difference, it's very re rewarding for most consultants. Michelle, describe your ideal attorney client. Oh, goodness. I, I mean, first and foremost, I like people who communicate well back and forth. And I think that's one thing I've had to learn with attorneys that some will not respond necessarily or give as much feedback, even if you're requesting it, um, but they keep using you. So you know that that's a good sign. Um, so I personally love people who can communicate well, who are willing to teach me more on the legal side as well, because sometimes I think just if they give a little bit of the legalities in it, then it helps me to know what to look for or add to maybe one of my work products. And I've learned a lot um, from attorneys that way. So I find it very rewarding as well when I'm able to be educated by them. Um, and then just, you know, obviously we all like somebody who's easy to talk to and personable and is willing to work as a collaborative effort where it's not attorney and consultant. We kind of do it all together. And I have some where, I mean, there's emails back and forth multiple times throughout the day, just, hey, what do you think about this? I found this, you know, going back and forth. And I, I really enjoy that. Dale, what is your ideal client? Well, I definitely agree with um, a whole bunch of that, with most of it. I, I think that the collaboration with an attorney who's willing to collaborate, willing to communicate, um, wants your opinion, may question it, but is willing to listen to you and to your reasoning. And there are certainly situations, uh, you know, I had a case where I found there was absolutely no merit. And what I didn't know at the time was that the attorney who gave me the case had actually gotten it from someone else. It wasn't really his case to begin with. So about eight or nine months later, I got a call from the attorney who originally had the case. And he said, I know what your opinion is, but I really, really feel sorry for this family. Would you please look at this again? And I told him, no. I said, you know, I, I, here's how I researched it. This is the information I came up with. And I said, frankly, you'd be wasting your money to have me go through the same thing again and come up with the same answer. I said, if you would like my resources, I'm happy to give them to you. And he was open to that. So even when they don't agree with you, if they're open and they're willing to communicate, that is so important. Suzanne, your ideal attorney. Um, I think that um, through that collaboration, whether the case resolves um, favorably for your client or not, the mutual respect that occurs in that process and through the building of the relationship is the ideal client for me. Um, because at the end of the day, 
you having that mutual respect doesn't really matter if the case was won or lost, so to speak, using those words very loosely. You know, most cases settle. So what does that really mean? It doesn't mean you win or you lose, you settle. Okay, you know, um, but for me, that's ideal because I've had several clients, whether I'm in the consultant role or in a testifying expert role, they still call me whether or not um, my review was favorable for them or not. But more often than not, because my review was objective, I tell it like it is, I tell them where the problems are, they were still able to navigate that case to resolve at a reasonable price, if you will, um, on behalf of the clients they represent if it's on the defense, but similarly on the plaintiff. So I think that mutual respect is your attorney client's gonna come back to you regardless one way or the other. Thank you. One of my, or my favorite type of attorney is the one who actually likes to collaborate in an active way. Sometimes I'll hear a CLNC consultant tell me that they just send their reports electronically. There's no real conversation between them and the attorney. And I always say, you know, the attorneys on his or her end looking at the case, they've got their perspective. As a CLNC consultant, we've got our perspective. But for me, it's only when you come together that one plus one equals three, and you really start to have a conversation and an exchange. And I think get to the best of what the case has to offer. And unfortunately, not all attorneys do that, but that is definitely my ideal attorney client, the one who really believes in the conversation. Doreen, um, you've worked with attorneys in the US and Canada. Um, so you've consulted with different attorneys handling different kinds of cases, different personalities, different lawyering practices, and different ways of working with CLMC consultants. How do you manage that? For me, that's the best part about what I do, <laughs> is to have all those different types of personalities and needs. It helps me grow as a person. You know, uh, I have definitely learned so much from those attorneys that were very challenging. You know, the ones who do say, well, why not? Or why do you think this? Uh, it's, I mean, I keep them all straight. I do have like a system that I have a, uh, a document in Word that I write down all my cases and the attorneys and that sort of thing. So I keep them straight that way. But I do love the challenge. And I think it's the best part about being a CLNC consultant is that you do have all those different personalities and cases. Michelle, uh, how about you? I mean, you work with PI attorneys, medical malpractice attorneys. Yeah, I actually 100% agree with Doreen. I um, think it's just important to stay organized and adjust to each different person's needs. I also actually have a Word document that labels out the same thing, each attorney, what type of cases they do, how they like the format, if there's any specifics within the format. Um, you know, I think it's just, as long as you stay organized and adjust accordingly, um, like Doreen said, you learn to grow, you learn to be more open, and then you're ultimately just producing a better work product for each attorney that you work with. I know each one of you are very involved in your business. You know, we've got a couple of real veterans here who have been in this for 20 plus years. And uh, Dale, how do you after all these years, create this life work balance? Because attorneys, as we know, they're busy, they can be demanding, you've got a lot of clients. How do you make that happen? I know some people are wanting to know if they're gonna be going from kind of a, a situation where they're overworked and understaffed into another situation where they have no life balance and are at the beck and call of attorneys. Um, I make sure that I find some kind of balance and still available to meet the attorney's needs. If I talk to the attorney earlier in the day and he says, I know I'm going to have more questions later, 
I've asked them, well, what time? Because I won't be working after such and such a time. Mm -hmm. So I set boundaries and um, I didn't learn that right away. It was it was hard, as I think Michelle said before they called during dinner or they, you know, call me at the crack of dawn. And, um, you know, I got to a point where I realized that wasn't healthy for anybody. So um, it's worked out very well. You know, and again, I think that's part of communication and letting the attorney know who you are and how you are in relation to them. Suzanne, I know you've consulted with some of the same attorneys for years. How do you nurture and maintain that professional relationship? Well, um, you know, I, I think that over the years, obviously, there's been social gatherings, there's been uh, conferences that we both mutually attend um, and maintaining connection on, you know, a somewhat of a personal level too. I mean, we're all aged in this line of work. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we share things in common like caring for elderly parents <laughs> that <laughs> happens to be on my plate. But, um, you know, so there are, it's a professional relationship that's nurtured um, over the course of just having conversations, talking about cases. Um, and inevitably, there's always a few minutes of the conversation. Well, how are you doing? You know, tell me how you are. How is your family? You know, and sharing exciting things. Oh, my daughter's pregnant or my son's getting married or those kind of things. I think it's OK to have that personal um, uh, touch, um, but also um, sending recognition. I always send a basket at Christmas. Um, I used to years ago when I, um, I used to send handwritten Christmas cards to every single attorney individually. Now I've kind of streamlined that and sent it to the firm, you know, mm -hmm. um, some sort of recognition throughout, throughout the year. I, I maintain that. I also maintain really strong relationships with the support staff. Um, cause it's not always about the attorney. And so when we use the term attorney client, don't forget that's paralegal, um, secretary, um, the filing clerk, the receptionist, um, the junior baby attorneys that I've spent countless hours educating, um, as well, because when there's new additions to the firms that we work with, you, uh, you know, us um, as CLNC consultants, and you, if you're very much a part of that team, your insight and education um, that you provide to the, the baby sharks, as they call them, is a really integral part of um, building and developing the case and helping them understand how the firm operates. Because inevitably, over the years, you're going to understand how things flow and you're actually going to be a part of those attorney meetings, which I attend every two weeks. So, you know, it's it's like having a family. It's work. Um, but just like you formulate relationships with family members, you do the same with your attorney clients as well. Um, Who's easier right. to work with, the baby attorneys or the veteran attorneys? <laughs> um, veteran attorneys. <laughs> That's baby, always been my experience. Yeah, yeah, baby attorneys, it's hard because they don't always understand. And then and then complicating their challenge because they're new, the new baby attorneys, um, they don't understand the medicine. So, um, I mean, a lot of my clients, you know, some of them, their fathers were doctors and things like that. So they like during the course of their life, they've kind of heard things along the way, but not everybody, but a few. And so um, you've got a double whammy when you're working with the baby sharks because um, you've got their challenges on the legal side and then you have the clinical education that that um, we require. But I did, if we have time, I did want to share a really cute story because one of the questions um, that you asked um, earlier was like, how do you handle when the attorney is disagreeing with you? And, and Michelle, you know, so pointedly said education. Well, just literally last week, I, I, you know, over the phone stood toe to toe with an attorney um, on a regulatory issue. And he, you know, he seasoned, he, he had cases with him and, and, 
and I was providing, and I'm a testifying expert in this in this particular matter. And um, so I told him, I, I said, no, um, this was regarding physician services uh, from a for a skilled nursing facility and what those requirements entailed and and why that it was a problem for this particular facility. And he goes, oh no, 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 we're fine on that issue. You know, we we have an HP from the, the hospital, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no, you're not fine. Oh, yes, I am. I know the title. And he cited the title to me. I go, well, let's take a look at that. I said, you have to back that up a look. So out came the regulations. And here I stood with him, literally, um, verbally, and pointed out why his interpretation was inaccurate. And so after about five minutes of this back and forth, and we worked through it a little bit, he goes, wow, after 20 years, you learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> So it's just a cute story, but I think it it really, you know, memorializes what we're talking about here today is like how valuable we as nurses from the varying expertise that we have um, can really add value um, to the litigation team. Thank you. Doreen, again, you've been working with some of the same attorneys for years now. What's the key for you for maintaining that professional relationship? Like Suzanne said, checking in, you know, don't be afraid to check in with them and say, hey, it's been a little bit or, you know, how's it going? Not even marketing, <laughs> you know, just how's it going? How are things? You know, how was your winter? How was your summer? You doing any vacation? And then you incorporate what you can do for them in the conversation, but just be yourself and you know, be real and check in and just uh, know that they have families just like all of us. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget when I first started out, I was talking with an attorney, uh, giving him my verbal opinion in my office, like totally quiet. Everything was really quiet. I had my notes in front of me and he was in the car driving his boys to soccer. And he says, hold on a second. And he turns around. I can hear him, you know, Shh, boys, quiet. And I thought, you know what? They're just people like us. He excused himself and said, I'm very sorry. My kids are here. But it made me realize that they're people and they need us and you can talk with them and don't be afraid to be yourself. And in line with that, also recognizing that this relationship is about them, not about us, right? Like I always say, the most successful consultants, they focus on their attorneys. It's about the attorney, what the attorney needs. It's not about them individually. And I think that's a, a key as well, right? Because you can be like that ballerina whose feet are bleeding, but the attorney's not gonna know it. <laughs> They're gonna just think you're just so gracious and uh, doing everything so easily. And I think that's another key too, not making every situation about you and doing that hard work without drama, without whining, without complaining, you know, just being upbeat. Cause that's another thing. I think attorneys really appreciate people who are positive and, you know, upbeat and kind of spread some light through the, the situation. Cause what they're doing is really hard. They do very hard work and they do like to surround themselves with people who work equally hard. They definitely like, and I know, for example, this is in, I hear this from you a lot. I know your feet bleed a lot, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure your attorneys don't know it. Well, so basically, I just want to say thank you to all of you for sharing what it is really like to consult with attorneys. If anyone has additional questions, please feel free to reach out to uh, the Institute, either uh, through email or over the phone. You can also check out their website at legalnurse.com. Thank you very much.